coma, you can see that you can relatively get an awful lot of galaxies in one image. The other reason that makes coma an interesting galaxy cluster to study is that it's near the galactic north pole. Now, our Milky Way galaxy is a spiral galaxy, and it's relatively pancake-shaped. Okay, And if you're looking out through the pancake, there's a lot of gas and dust that's blocking your view. But if instead you look perpendicular to the pancake, to the north or south, to the poles, you can then look through much less gas and dust when you want to study things that are outside our galaxy. For instance, other galaxies. So having a cluster of galaxies that's located near the galactic north pole makes it a really well-studied cluster, and so we've studied coma in, in, in amazing detail. Now, I said it's a relatively compact cluster. That's really for, for, for ground-based observations. Hubble's high-resolution observations actually don't cover a uh, large enough area to get coma into one field. So Co Hubble has to study different small parts of coma. And we currently are looking at an image that studied this part of the coma cluster. And here is Hubble's image from that, and you can see the galaxies in much more detail. But actually, this is a high-definition monitor, but it still doesn't contain all that Hubble shows. Because while this has about a megapixel of, uh, uh, of detail, the true Hubble image is 83 million pixels, 83 megapixels. Compare that to your digital camera, which most of us have cameras that are a few megapixels. Well, this full image would be 83 megapixels. So I'm really not even showing you all the detail there is there. But let's take a look at some of the galaxies in coma. And what I'll show them to you is we're going to show them to you pixel for pixel. So let's we'll take a look at these four galaxies. And these small cutout regions will contain every pixel that Hubble looks at. Now, this first galaxy is a spiral galaxy, sort of like our Milky Way. You can see sort of the pinwheel structure around. And again, it would be a pancake-shaped galaxy, a flat galaxy. This one, you know, somewhat tilted to our line of sight so that you can see some of the spiral structure. The second galaxy is also a spiral, but instead of being tilted to our line of sight, it's pretty much edge on to our line of sight. So here you can see the spiral galaxy's disk structure, but of course you can't see any pinwheel shape. You have to do other analysis to be able to see, oh, is it really a spiral galaxy so that you can see this, the spiral structure? What you see especially here is that if the stars are going to be confined to this thin little disk, then they're all basically orbiting within a plane. All right, they're very well-ordered galaxies because the stars are basically all orbiting within a plane. Not so with our third galaxy. Our third galaxy is a different class called an elliptical. Now, if you take a circle and you stretch it, it becomes an ellipse, and hence the name elliptical. So it's a great big ball of stars. And in order to get this shape, the stars wouldn't all be in a nice orderly pattern. They'd actually be going off in every different direction. So if you take all the orbits of stars and you randomize them and mix them up and let them go every, every different direction, you get an elliptical galaxy. Our fourth galaxy to look at is sort of a combination of the previous two. It's called a lenticular galaxy, or uh, in astronomical terminology, they call it S0, as in sort of the, the spiral category zero. And what it consists of is you can sort of see a disk over here. It has a disk like the spiral galaxies, but it also has the big ball of stars of the elliptical galaxies. So it's sort of a combination of the elliptical ball of stars with the spiral disk. What's interesting about these different shapes is, well, when you look at the full coma cluster, you see many more ellipticals and lenticulars than you would expect. If you take a galaxy and you let it form in isolation, not really near other galaxies, you tend to get spiral galaxies. Spiral galaxies seem to be what nature prefers when you form a galaxy in isolation. But when you look inside clusters, you find many more ellipticals and lenticulars. We call this the morphology density relationship. The morphology of galaxies changes with the density of the environment in which you're looking. So that you get an awful lot more of these big ellipticals. As a matter of fact, these are giant cluster ellipticals, a typical thing to find at the center of a cluster of galaxies. The question would then be, well, what would cause this morphology density relationship? 
The simple thing, answer is interactions between galaxies. When you take two galaxies and you pass them by one another, they can distort each other's morphology. And they have a tendency to randomize the stellar orbits. Remember all those in, in a spiral galaxy, you've got nice circular orbits all on a plane? Well, if you disturb it, those orbits tend to go all over the place. And what do you end up with? You end up with more elliptical galaxies. And Coma is one of the densest clusters of galaxies that we know of. So the morphology density relationship is at one of its strongest points here in Coma, and it's a great place to study these ellipticals and lenticular galaxies. Now, there's one more interesting thing about the Hubble image, and it's not the various galaxies you see here and here, but it's actually in the center here where you're not looking at any of the galaxies in Coma. Instead, what you're looking at is all these background galaxies that are well beyond Coma. The Coma cluster is about 300 million light years away. That means the light from Coma takes 300 million years to cross space before we see it. These galaxies are probably a billion, two billion, three billion, several billion light years away. Much, much further, much, much further beyond Coma. And you can see, you know, there are the standard spiral shapes and ellipticals. But if you go way, way far out, you actually get some really strange shapes for the most distant galaxies. And, well, I'd like to discuss those, but that's really another story for, for another episode of Hubble's Universe Unfiltered. The point is, is that we see these galaxies all over the place when we have these deep Hubble images, and they're really quite an amazing uh, number of galaxies out in the universe for us to study, both near and in the very distant. So, let's take a look at where we've been. We're going to start with that wide field image of Coma Berenices, and then we slowly zoom in to see the Coma cluster. This is the Digital Sky Survey image. You can see all of the thousand galaxies of Coma, but of course we don't stop there. We keep on digging further in. And now we bring up the Hubble image, and we don't stop at the beautiful, gorgeous Hubble galaxies, but we instead keep diving past those Hubble galaxies until we get to these very distant galaxies on the other side of the universe. So that's Hubble falling into coma. Not going comatose, but falling into the coma cluster of galaxies and exploring the wonderful galaxies out there. That's it for today's episode. We'll see you next time on Hubble's Universe Unfiltered.